Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. The time has finally come for me to do a review on the unified dream wall. Now I did have a dream wall that was a part of early access when it first released and I do have that installed and it's been working really well. There has been some changes with the general release dream wall and we'll be taking a look at it. First I'd like to thank Ubiquity for sending me this dream wall to do a review on. Now all my thoughts are my own and there is a couple things that I dislike about the dream wall and we will get into that. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. If you want to join our community even more I do have a discord server and affiliate links down in the description below. In this video, we're first gonna take a closer look at the dream wall, but this isn't gonna be the typical review. I'm gonna be going up to my mom's place and we're gonna be installing this. So this will be like an on-site job. We're gonna be adding a bunch of cameras to it, which we may have to add a UNVR if we hit the max. We'll also be adding some Unify access points indoor and outdoor. Eventually at my parents' house, they have this little shed and we might put Unify access on it as the dream wall does support PoE++. Now let's go over to my table and take a closer look at the dream wall. And this is the unified dream wall and it's a pretty big device. Right on the front, we could see that we have the LED screen, which is great. And I believe it is a touch screen, but we'll have to test it out. To get the case open, all we need to do is press on these two buttons and then lift up. So let's do that. Now, right on the top of the dream wall, we could see that it says core. And then if we keep going down, we have PSU1 and then we have PSU2. Currently, there's only one power supply in these, and I don't even believe you could buy a secondary power supply. Looking on the right hand side, we have a cable pathway, and if we go up, we also have a hole at the back for our power if we'd like to do that. This is where the power goes in, and it does have a lock on it, and beside that, we have a 1 gigabit port, and then we have a 2.5 gigabit WAN port, and then a 10 gigabit WAN port. For camera storage, we have the SD slot and then we have our reset button. On the top of the unit, this is where our ethernet cables are gonna go. We have four PoE ports, we have four PoE plus, and then we have four PoE++, and then we have a couple that don't have PoE at all. We also have a one 10 gigabit SFP plus port if we're gonna be adding it to another switch. On the front of the switch, we have this cable manager right here, which is actually rubber, and we'll show you that once we get this installed. We're gonna just be running the cables directly in here. We won't be using a patch panel. Now that we've taken a closer look at the dream wall, let's take a look at the spec. So we're looking at the Canadian website right now and it's $1,336. This has integrated Wi-Fi 6 with 4x4 MIMO. It also has full Unify OS support as well as the applications. It could do 3.5 gigabit per second routing. And we've already gone over the different ports. It has that 4.7 inch touch screen and an integrated 128 gigabit SSD and pre-installed 512 gigabit. Now I didn't show everything that comes in the box. It does come with the dream wall. It does come with the mounting bracket and a template and some screws and anchors as well as the power cable which is a locking power cable. The next thing for us to do is getting on the road, driving two hours and getting this installed. All right, so we've arrived at my mom's for the installation. We have the unified dream wall. We have a mesh access point that's gonna be going outside. And then we have this directional dual band antenna. Never used it, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, we also have the G5 Pro with the vision enhancer. So that's gonna look great in the dark. We have a G4 bullet. We have another G4 bullet. We have a G4 dome. And then we have the unified in wall Wi-Fi 6. 
In, in this box, we just have some random stuff. This AP may go in the garage. We also have the Mesh Pro, which we might use. And then we have another G5 bullet. We won't be able to use all these cameras because the Dream Wall only handles about six. Uh, currently, we have two G4 instants on the side. We're gonna have to put a conduit down from the attic all the way down into the garage. And we'll route that into where the Dream Wall is gonna go. And you will see where the Dream Wall goes. We'll end up putting a bunch of cameras around the property. This is the view from the backyard and right here where the hummingbird feeder is, we're gonna put a camera on the soffit so that they could watch the hummingbirds. And there's also planes that go down. Um, over on this little bunkie over here, we're gonna end up putting the one of the Wi-Fi access points, another camera on the back because they have some deer showing up and we'll uh, get that caught in a camera. This is where the current dream router is around here. We're gonna put a backboard on this side of the wall. We have a couple studs, we'll put the backboard on and then the dream wall. A bunch of the cables will be coming out this way and we'll route it into the dream wall. Next thing we gotta do, we need to put the bracket on for the dream wall. We're gonna end up cutting a little hole above it and then putting this brush plate. And that's where we're gonna route the cables into and then we'll do a hole at the back so that power could come down. We now have the bracket on and we need to hang the dream wall. It just hangs by this rod here, which is very easy. So Jay's gonna put it up. And that's all we got to do. So now at the top, we're going to drill a hole. We're going to put a uh, mesh little plate on top. We're going to drill a hole for the power in the back and then start running the ethernet cable. So let me show you what was done. We have the dream wall on this plywood backboard, but we have this brush plate where all the cables are coming down. And then we have the dream wall, which shows real time statistics. So I did a speed test. They only get about 60 by 60. We could press back on that and it is a touch screen. So it looks pretty cool. On the touch screen, we could see our Wi-Fi, and then we could see our network and we could see our Wi-Fi experience. We could see the clients and then the ports that are being used. We could actually click and then we could select our application. So let's go to protect. So protect is saying that we have six devices online and then it's showing us how long we're gonna have our motion events, which we have 31. And then we have this hummingbird camera, which was the latest motion detection. So now let me go show you where the cameras were mounted. The first camera was this G5 Pro with the enhancer on it. And that is going down towards the driveway. We had to run this conduit because we didn't want to open up drywall. We're having a party here today and that would have been a big mess. On the side, we have a G4 dome and that's looking towards this feeder which deers come by next up we have the shack and then we have this mesh access point this is going to be coming down i did buy a u6 mesh and we will put a drip loop we do have a g5 bullet and that's pointing towards the fireplace we have a g4 bullet and that is just going towards this hummingbird feeder they have hummingbirds and they wanted to capture that and then they do have some planes that come down into the lake so that will be cool to see and then over here we have a couple g4 instants this is temporary but uh, they are looking over towards the bay. All right, now the installation has been done for quite a few days. Let's take a look of the settings in the dream wall. You'd see it's just called Mum and Sean's, and then we could see the name of UDW. Below that, we could see our PoE power availability, which we're really not using much, only 28 watts out of 420 watts. We'd see what is connected to the UDW. So we have a couple cameras, we have an Android phone, and then we have a shed view, which is another camera. Then we could see our IP address, MAC address, uptime memory, and our load average. Below that, it's showing us our WAN statistics, which is a private IP address because they're going with Bell and they're in double NAT and we didn't put that into bridge mode. Then we could see our air stats. With the unified dream wall, 
this comes with the Wi-Fi 6 access point built right in. Now scrolling down, we could see our power sources. We could see power supply unit one is online and unit two is offline. That's because we can't even buy a secondary power supply yet. It also shows us insights for the power supply units. We'd see that we're using 62 out of 550 watts or about 12%. Like any other access point, we could scan the channels for the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz. Now looking over at port manager, this is where it looks a little bit different from their regular switches. So let's click into that. This first view kind of looks like one of their enterprise switches where it just has 24 ports across. But on the unified dream wall, there's 17 across and then there's 18, 19 and 20 where 19 and 20 is our WAN connections. Now this is using the same Unify OS that runs on the Dream Machines and the Dream Machines Special Edition. So configuration wise, there isn't any difference. We'd still do our networks, our Wi-Fi, our threat management, so on and so forth. I will be doing a full 2023 configuration video coming up here shortly. Now let's take a look into Protect. And this is one thing that I don't like with the Dream Wall. Now within Unify Protect, I have six different cameras. Five of them are 2K and one is 4K. But if we look on the dashboard under camera capacity, we're already hitting 116%. So this unit can't really hold that many cameras. I'd probably do a max of four cameras. Under storage, you can see I have an SD card that has a one terabyte, but it's only recording for two days and 22 hours which definitely isn't enough. So for my parents' house, I've already brought up a UNVR and we've brought a couple hard drives and that's what we're gonna connect so that they have a longer storage space. Now, I know a lot of people had concerns about the cable management with the dream wall. And this is on a plywood backboard. It would look better on drywall, but that's all I had. We put this little brush plate in here and then we ran the cables down. I think it looks pretty neat and tidy. Now, if we go onto the Ubiquiti website, they do now offer cable raceways, and this is the pictures that they're showing to make it look nice and neat. You can buy cable raceways in other low voltage suppliers though, and I'm not too sure if these prices are a little expensive. Now for my final thoughts on the Unify Dreamwall and would I recommend it? I think it does have a use case in new home builds or places that don't require a lot of cameras, maybe one or two, a few workstations, maybe some phones, and one or two doors for door access, it would work great. If you want more than five cameras, you're gonna have to add a UNVR or a UNVR Pro to handle that amount of cameras. I really wish Ubiquiti would have taken the Power Supply 2 unit out and thrown in a hard drive bay there. It would make much more sense to me as we can't buy the PSU yet. Let me know what you think about the Unified Dream Wall down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.